Hi, I'm Dale Denwalt, the aerospace and technology reporter for The Oklahoman. And 50 years ago, human spaceflight captured the imagination of the world, and it culminated in the lunar landing of Apollo 11, uh, when about 600 million people watched as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin stepped out of their lander and onto the surface of the moon. Today I'm joined by Congresswoman Kendra Horn, Chair of the House Subcommittee on Space and Aeronautics. Did I get that right? You got it right. Awesome. Uh, you recently said that Apollo 11 was indeed a giant leap. Mm -hmm. It inspired and continues to inspire generations to explore. Yeah. Yeah. And when we look back 50 years ago and the interest that the lunar landing mm -hmm. generated across the world yeah. and the interest in space flight now, uh, what's what's the, the difference? Uh, are, are, were people more interested in that kind of thing 50 years ago? I think we were more aware of our interest. It was at the forefront of everyone's mind because it was doing something completely new and exciting that had never been done before. You know, NASA had been around about 10 years. NASA just celebrated its 60th anniversary and we're about to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. So in that decade, uh, there'd been a lot of successes, but there were also a lot of unknowns. And at, that, at the same time, there was basically one or two methods of communication. It was capturing the imagination and doing something we'd never done before. And now, space has become such a part of our, our culture. You walk out in, in, into any crowd, and I guarantee you, you'll see a kid with a NASA shirt on or something about a rocket. It's just become a part of who we are and, and things that we take for granted, like all of the technology around us, satellite uplinks, our phones, so many other things that we use on a day-to-day -day basis had their seeds in that exploration. So it's a different kind of engagement. And I think it's time that we continue to lift that back up and help people understand the impact that space and the investment of NASA and our uh, and, and all of all of the work that's happened and how it's changed our lives is is a uh, is this difference you mentioned um, you know people uh, people know about space they yeah. understand it you know they, they know it's you know while not completely safe you know people go up to space all the time yeah. and there's not very many unknowns I guess when it comes to getting someone to the International Space Station and back um, but you know, is, is could could NASA do more media or outreach, or is it maybe it's the mission that uh, uh, people aren't tuning in to watch every uh, rocket launch now? I think it's a combination because you're right. I mean, it's almost routine getting back and forth to the space station. We've done such a good job of of doing that uh, that it seems like there's not as much risk involved. But there there still is. Space is hard, mm -hmm. and it's even harder than we think it is. We've just gotten a lot better at it. But I think with the move to return back to the moon to go further in uh, human deep space exploration, uh, one of the things that I, I think a lot of people don't understand is. We haven't done this sort of deep space work in almost 50 years. Since the last time we landed on the moon, we've been in low Earth orbit. And so the technology is completely different. We have, for example, as a prop, we've got more technology in one of these things that we carry around on a day-to-day -day basis than it took to get us to the moon. And so the risks and the rewards and the challenges are very different. And the people that got us there, the engineers and the scientists, uh, many of them are retired. Many of them are, are no longer with us. So we've got new discoveries and new technology to invent. And we've got to bring people in and invite them to come along with us on that. On, on that point, um, is there anything in the works that you think could, could draw people back to the, you know, maybe not the television anymore, mm -hmm. but back to... Um, to, to really having a keen sense of exactly what's going on at NASA and in space. Is there anything on the horizon? I think there are a number of things. You know, NASA actually has one of the largest social media platforms. They've got more followers than most other platforms, but we don't talk about it as much. And I think what's on the horizon as we celebrate the 50th anniversary is to look at all of the other ways that we have expanded our scope of vision. We had, uh, for example, a, a few weeks ago in the full Science, Space and Technology Committee, we had a hearing about the black hole, the discovery of the black hole and the mapping and those kind of things. We are talking about the rovers and the next generation of that, so that sort of exploration. Uh, but then 
the next step of going back to the moon, going back to Mars to explore that piece. But I think it also requires that we talk about what we can accomplish, why it's so hard, and that there is always going to be risk involved. I mean, when you strap people to uh, a giant explosive and, and send them out into space, that's always going to be challenging in a, in a number of ways. But NASA's continued outreach, but I think that's also important for policymakers uh, and, and like us on the authorizing committee to talk about and ask the questions so we can put it out there. And then uh, as, as a broader conversation, the imagination and bringing that in and helping people understand how many ways our investment in space impacts our daily lives. As far as investment goes, NASA has recently asked for $1.6 billion um, as a, a additional monies uh, this year, next fiscal year. Um, this is after they were uh, criticized uh, for really not presenting a detailed plan on how yeah. they were supposed to get back to the moon. You know, this was a, a pronouncement from the highest levels of government that yeah. we're going to the moon, but, um, you know, as of, I think, a few weeks ago, NASA really didn't say how they were going to yeah. do that. Um, has has their their communication since then um, has has that been adequate to members of the committee? We still have a lot of unanswered questions. So I, I think there's a couple pieces to this. As you can tell, I'm clearly uh, a supporter of NASA. I think our investment in scientific discovery as well as exploration and all of these things are important. The challenge with what happened, what's happened over these first uh, few months of this year, and we're working towards a NASA reauthorization later this fall, is that we were already, NASA was already planning to go to the moon and then Mars for deep space exploration was the acceleration by four years. Uh, but along with that, we didn't have a, a plan of how much it was going to cost, how we were going to make that happen. And, you know, that's a lot of work and it's hard. And without a plan, uh, it's hard to know what the what the cost is going to be and in order to set NASA up for success to ensure that we are authorizing and appropriating giving the enough money we gotta have an idea of what it takes to get there and of course there's no guarantee that you're gonna stick to every single penny or dime because you're gonna encounter challenges but what we still don't have is how much it's gonna take to get us from here to the moon and 1.6 billion you know it's great we, we know we need more funding but is that enough to accelerate the timeline. And then the other concern that many of us had uh, on the committee, on both sides of the committee, is, uh, is the need to understand, because if we don't set NASA up for success, they're gonna look like they're failing. We're not gonna be good stewards of the taxpayer dollars. And for me, and I think many others that I've heard from, they, they proposed to take that 1.6 billion from Pell Grants. Well, I think many people know uh, that Pell Grants are a way that we that, that students that don't have the financial means to go and become a, a astrophysicist or engineers uh, use to get there. And we're gonna need more uh, rocket scientists, not fewer, to do this in a shorter time frame. So we're gonna continue to work because there is a very clear uh, belief on committee members on both sides that we want to set NASA up for success. We have to balance the programs, but we have to have some idea of what they think it's going to take and a detailed plan of how to get there to, to set that up right. And that's probably also important for the private companies yes. that would be interested in yeah. bidding on these projects, you know, five, you know, two, three, four, five years down the line yes. to know exactly what they need to yes. prepare for, right? Yes. And so what's your take on, on the use of commercial uh, 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 private business um, uh, uh, collaborating with uh, NASA. On yeah, this. Y you make a, a great point about the need to have that information because certainty in these bigger projects is really critical. What what does the funding look like? How are we going to grow? Because businesses have to hire people. NASA has to hire people. We have to have the workforce. And my take on that is there's always been a role for public-private partnerships. You know, from the very beginning of the Apollo program, the Mercury program, uh, there were companies that came in but they worked alongside NASA. So the question becomes what's the right balance? And you know if we're investing in this research and, and that that goes to where's the commercial market, who is kind of driving it to make sure that we're making the best investment of our taxpayer dollars that we that NASA has the ability to oversee and make sure that things continue to move along uh, and that we keep the industrial base strong. Because since the very beginning, those companies that were integral in the process uh, worked hand-in-hand -hand with NASA, and then they developed outside 
uh, commercial interest, which is the way it should be. That initial government investment and exploration leads to discoveries that we couldn't have imagined even before we got started and things that we take for granted today. So for me, it's always a question of what's the, what's the balance of that um, and does NASA have the ability to, uh, to drive, the, drive the train? Uh, as it were, or drive the rocket, and make sure that we're continuing to meet those milestones and we're able to hold uh, companies accountable. And on the other side, that the companies can bid the projects and be able to know what kind of work is going to be involved and what the specifications are. It's hard for them to bid if there aren't specifications. When can we, when can we uh, expect a vote on this uh, budget amendment? On the budget amendment, so the uh, the, C, the uh, CJS, the Commerce, Justice, and State uh, Appropriations Bill, uh, came through uh, last week. So we we voted on that. They did get more funding. We also actually increased the funding. There were several really critical programs that were, were zeroed out, but it will go now over to the Senate and go through the, the appropriations process. Process. We we've had a couple of smaller mini buses, which is several of the the pieces that have gone through, and now they're heading over to the Senate. Gotcha. Yeah. So. One final question: yeah. uh, Oklahoma has a long history of involvement in the space program. Yeah. I was reading a story uh, from 50 years ago, I think, this week, uh, talking about the uh, the number of Oklahomans in. Yeah you know, engineers coming out of uh, yeah. Oklahoma universities yeah. who just made the short trip down to Houston. Yeah. Um, and tell me a little bit more about what you know, uh, what you figured out. Uh, I understand your staff has done a yeah. lot of research over the past yes. few weeks. Yes. Um, t tell us a little bit about Oklahoma's involvement in the early space program. Oklahoma has had a long-term involvement and some major contributions to our space program since the very beginning. And that's one of the things that's really exciting. And when you ask about getting people involved. That's why doing these big things matters. It brings people in and we, in, as we increase diversity, whether it's, you know, it's Oklahomans at the beginning, um, people from different backgrounds, it's so important. So we have people like uh, General uh, Stafford, who was one of the Apollo astronauts that went around the moon, didn't get to land, but is still with us. And there's a Stafford Museum uh, not too far from here at, over in Weatherford and um, is still very active in the, the contributions that he's made. And we're doing a series of uh, conversations about Oklahomans in space. And we've had a lot of women astronauts and groundbreakers as well uh, that, that have done so much for the space program, uh, including, uh, including astronauts that, well, that were selected for the astronaut corps before they let women fly. And and, and the Mercury 13 was actually a group of women who qualified before uh, before we we sent women into space. And some some of the the groundbreaking women who spent more time on Mir and and spent time on the previous space station are from Oklahoma and have made discoveries and and set records. So we, we're going to keep talking about that because Oklahoma has a really rich history in aerospace from you know right here in, in Oklahoma City, the Mike Monroney Center. It's one of the first FAA centers to all of these astronauts, and we continue to contribute. And aerospace is such a large, large part of our community. We want to keep lifting that up and inspiring more students to go, to go into uh, engineering school and to become technicians, and who knows what they're going to discover. Quite an amazing legacy there. Um, once again, uh, thanks, uh, Kendra, for joining me here uh, for this interview. And uh, if you'd uh, like to know more about the uh, Apollo 11 uh, project and the coverage that we're doing, make sure you join us online at oklahoman.com and uh, everywhere you see us on social media. Thank you.